Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about FileMaker server speed as it relates to network latency. Whoa, that's a mouthful. What does this all mean? A lot of times customers will want to determine what they can do to make their FileMaker solutions quicker. Sometimes it has to do with the design of the solution. Sometimes it has to do with the distance between the customer and the FileMaker server. And a lot of times it has to do with just the internet and how it's behaving on a given day or the customer's personalized internet, whether it be working from home on a Wi-Fi, competing with kids playing video games, or maybe it's working from an office where, again, Wi-Fi is introduced and no one's really plugged into the network. This is commonplace these days. And a lot of times customers will think that their FileMaker solution is slow or slower than normal when in fact their internet or their network is slower than normal, but it's hard to prove that to them or to convince them otherwise. This particular file will help with that. It'll actually determine in real numbers what the latency is between them and selected sites on the internet, along with any site that you choose or even a FileMaker server location or server address. So what is latency exactly? Latency is the delay between the sender and the receiver, usually measured in milliseconds as the time it takes to make the round trip. And just a reminder that a millisecond is one thousandth of a second. So this file here is going to be completely free and delivered to you by way of Productive Computing University. You'll find this file already loaded as a lesson under the FM Server Manager course. Again, that course is free. That course's primary focus is working with a file that works with the FileMaker Server uh, admin API. So that particular course is already there and has been there for a while. That file is ready for you to automate your FileMaker server. But we thought this would be a great sidekick file to that where you can also measure latency. This file was actually created by a friend and fellow FileMaker developer. His name is Leland Long, and he's been developing in FileMaker for well over 30 years. He also does Swift application development for iOS. He's currently using React Native on various projects he's implementing. Among many other technical things, you could consider him a jack of all trades and master of many. So thank you, Leland, for providing this file and allowing us to present it here on Productive Computing University. So this file, let's take a look at it. You'll see that uh, with a quick test, we've got some nice JavaScript gauges here running in a web viewer, and we can immediately see the name of the site or the location of a server along with its milliseconds down below. Configuration of this is super easy, and I'm gonna walk you through that here in a minute. This file is also delivered as an optional add-on. So we'll make the file available as you see it here in its complete state, as well as an add-on where you can take the components of this and add it to any solution that you want. Perhaps you want to embed it right now in a customer solution so they can go to a configuration page and do a network test and voila, they'll have this and then they can report back to you the numbers or take a screenshot and let you know what their network performance looks like from their end. That way you can prove without a doubt if it's the internet that's causing the holdup or something more. All right, so let's take a look. So I'll create a blank FileMaker file here and I'll call it uh, my test, just so we keep the name straight. And I don't need to add any schema or fields or anything like that. I can immediately go into layout mode and add the add-on. Now this particular add-on has been already pre-installed, so it's available here on my list and it's not necessarily categorized under the JavaScript area. You'll find it at the bottom here because at the moment that's where it's showing up. The name of the add-on is called What is My Latency? So I'll choose that add-on. And at this point, we've been training people to drag the add-on over to the layout, but in this case, you don't need to do that. We'll stay in layout mode and go right to the new layout that it created when the add-on was installed called What is My Latency? And it looks just like this. Not much to look at in layout mode, but when we go to browse mode, we can see here the beginnings of some pre-configured information. If I go and use the traditional configure button here at the top right that's been programmed, I get several options. My first option is the number of servers to test against. That literally is what it says. If I wanna only test two servers at a time or three or four, I get that option. Then we have the second option here, which is the number of times to test each server. And what I like about this is latency is a tricky thing because it changes second by second, moment by moment, minute by minute, time of the day. It's always changing. It depends on when you test it. So the way this works is it tests a minimum of three times based on this configuration here up to a maximum of 10 times. 
So let's just pick three for argument's sake. And what it'll do is it'll measure three times and then average the total. It'll total the three and then divide by three and, and average it out. So you'll get an average latency. So it's a better predictor of overall latency. And it's not going to use any one single test to determine the outcome. Then below that, we have another option here called time out. And that's, again, in seconds for each test. So if you want the tests to time out in a shorter time out, you can do that. Now, why would you change this? Well, let's say you already knew that a particular server or a particular website you were testing is known to have a high latency. Uh, you can put that timeout a little higher to give it a chance to reach its latency figure and give you some feedback uh, before just automatically timing out. Or if you know, let's say, that everything you want to test is going to be 10 seconds or less, or let's say 20 seconds or less, you can make a longer, a shorter timeout. That way, the test goes by quicker. Essentially, it's a subtle way to tweak the dials uh, depending on your situation. All right, and then this is easy to understand here below. You can just simply say server one, give it a name, and then give it a URL. If you are going to use a URL, we recommend putting HTTP colon or HTTPS. So that's what I'll do here. I'll put this first site. We'll take, actually, we'll leave Apple and we'll take off Amazon and we'll put PCU for Productive Computing University just to give it another website to look at other than the, the major ones here. And I'll do that. And that server is going to be PCULearning.com. There we go. Now let's test this. Okay, perfect. So our tests are complete. It did three tests and averaged the total of each. So now you can determine latency. And I'm doing this test from San Diego. The Productive Computing University server happens to be running in Oregon on AWS. So for this next test, I've actually loaded the file directly on an AWS server, also being hosted out of Oregon. And let's see if the numbers change at all. Okay, so this time it's very interesting. I get basically zero millisecond lag time for Productive Computing University, and that's sort of to be expected because it's actually running on an AWS server. So in a sense, it's probably already in the same data center or very close to the same data center, certainly in the same region. Then Google at 10, Microsoft at 10, and Amazon, again, at zero. You'd expect that from Amazon, being that it is on an Amazon server. Let's test it a couple more times and see. Well, we're getting pretty consistent results here. Interesting that Google and Microsoft keep switching to zero as well. But regardless, extremely fast, low latency times here, uh, running from a server that's actually presumably on the backbone of the internet. Direct links to the free course called FM Server Manager will be available below the description of this video. Within that course, you can download this file completely opened and unlocked. Thanks for watching.